this video. I'm in beautiful Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm here to check out the Museum of Discovery and Science. Well, I've been to a lot of museums over the years, and quite a few of them have been science museums. Um, I remember going to the, the Orlando Science Museum and uh, the Discovery Center, and I, in a way, I'd even consider Epcot in, in many regards to be almost like a giant science museum. But this place is kind of unique in that um, this is the first dedicated science museum that I've ever seen that really does blur the lines. I think they did take a page out of the Epcot book because I've never seen a science museum with all these rides and simulators before. It's the first time and I like this museum a lot because it does tend to blur the lines between science museum and uh, like a inner city theme park. You're going to notice in this review that I dwell a lot on the fact that this place reminds me of Epcot so much, but the Museum of Discovery and Science really does have that old 1980s Epcot feel, and honestly that's a positive thing because as Disney has kind of abandoned the educational side of their parks and have uh, instead embraced their intellectual properties and kind of washed out what Epcot was supposed to be, uh, this place is kind of filling in that gap where you actually can get, um, you know, some kind of field trip opportunities for your kids. And there's a lot of interaction in these exhibits. You know, in the dinosaur exhibit, you can move the limbs and those type of things. And uh, flight simulators that you can actually uh, let your kids fly, you know, the, the planes and try to land them and do all kinds of stuff. So there's a ton of interaction at this place. The whole place really feels like a Disney park, just on a smaller scale. They've got dinosaurs everywhere, and it, you'll get a vibe of the universe of energy crossed between uh, the dinosaur attraction at Animal Kingdom. And then when you walk around the River Otter Aquarium and the Fish and Sea Turtle exhibits, you'll feel like you're in the living seas. Okay, so I spent some time talking about the positives of this uh, museum. Let's talk about the negatives, and there's quite a few negatives. You're also going to notice that... Uh, my bottom line, I'm not going to give this uh, a recommendation. I just, uh, I think the price of admission is just too high, and the uh, the size of this museum is too small. There's just a lot of issues that I have with this particular museum. So, admission price is $27 for adults, which is a little high, but the children's admission is $22, which is way too high. You know, when I've been to the other uh, science museums, it's usually about $20 for adults and about $10 to $12 for kids, so they are way too high on the children's admission. The other thing that you're going to notice is you have to park uh, with parking meters, and it's an additional cost, and the parking meters outside are expensive. You know, I parked at the lot that was right next to the museum, and it was 10 bucks to park for two hours. So if you're looking to stay for more than two hours, you're going to be spending 15, 20 bucks on parking as well, on top of the $27 for adults and on top of the $22 for kids. So it, it's, it's just too expensive for what you're getting. So now for my bottom line. This is not a recommended attraction for me. Uh, if you are okay with the, the cost of admission and realize that this is only a two to three hour attraction, then you'll probably enjoy it. It's good for, you know, a couple hours in air conditioning in South Florida. For the summertime, it, it probably does make a little bit of sense. But overall, I do feel like there are better attractions in, in South Florida that you can go to instead of this one that are half the cost. Thanks for watching this episode of The Adventure Schmuck. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See everyone next week.